SpaceX finally and successfully fails after days of trying, and the UAE teams up with NASA to train Emirati astronauts. During the early morning hours of Wednesday, September 23rd, SpaceX finally managed to complete a pressurization to failure test with SN7.1, the second 304L stainless steel test tank, and the first 304L stainless steel test tank to be equipped with a thrust dome and thrust buck. SpaceX has been trying to push SN7.1 to its limits or burst pressure for a while now. The company attempted its first pressurization to failure test with SN7.1 on September 17th and had about two subsequent attempts before successfully failing on September 23rd. Of the time of uploading this video, Elon hasn't confirmed what pressure the tank achieved. SN7, the first 304 stainless steel test tank, achieved a record-breaking pressure, so it should be interesting to see if SN7.1 breaks the record. SN7.1 right now looks to be in relatively good shape. As a reminder, 304L, according to Elon, has a higher toughness at cryogenic temperatures and is a more ductile alloy. Meanwhile, in terms of SN8, we're getting closer to the SN8 test flight. The vehicle, equipped with air covers, was rolled out of the mid-bay on Tuesday, September 22nd, and an exciting moment happened shortly after with the installation of the aft fins. One notable difference between the air covers from SN8 and Mark 1 and Mark 2 is that this time they don't extend through the body of the tank. Over the weekend on Saturday, September 19th, the thrust simulator was installed on the launch mount. In the past, we've seen the thrust simulator installed just a few days prior to cryogenic proof testing. So given SN8's current status, it's highly likely that SpaceX is gearing up for cryoproof tests with that prototype. The question is, will SpaceX install the nose cone equipped with forward fins before proceeding to cry tests? We'll soon find out. Starship SN8, of course, is expected to be the first 304L stainless steel, full-scale Starship prototype equipped with three Raptor engines, a nose cone, and aerodynamic control surfaces, and the first ship to perform the highly anticipated skydiver maneuver, or belly flop as it's being called. A breakdown of the skydiver maneuver After reaching 60,000 feet, SN8 is expected to perform some type of turnaround maneuver and enter into a control fall, via rapidly augmenting its control surfaces, its forward and aft fins. During atmospheric re-entry, SpaceX will use the header tanks to supply fuel and oxidizer to the Raptor engines. The fins provide additional surface area, thereby increasing drag, allowing Starship to slow down in the case of the SN8 test, Earth's atmosphere. The fins will also provide a degree of lift, ensuring the vehicle doesn't fall too fast and doesn't get too hot upon re-entry. In the event that things don't go exactly as planned with SN8, and there's probably a relatively high probability of that, SN9 and SN10 are following closely behind. High production rate allows for fast iteration. Many of the various subsections of the SN9 tank have been completed, and stacking of these sections should begin soon. Over the weekend, the SN9 forward dome section was rolled out of the big tent, and the aft skirt section has already been spotted with the legs installed. Building an assembly line A Starship Factory through looking at the footage from Boca Chica, you can get a sense that it's really starting to feel more and more like an assembly line or a rocket factory. Starships are rolling out rapidly, and SpaceX is moving one step closer to its intended production rate. There are now over six Starship prototypes at the site at various stages of development. The flight-proven test articles SN5 and SN6, the yet-to-fly but first fully functioning full-scale Starship SN8, and three more Starships. SN9 following closely behind SN8, and two more Starships at fairly early stages in development, but that's expected to change quickly. And in terms of Super Heavy, the first section of Super Heavy, the Super Heavy Common Barrel Assembly section, has just been spotted. NASA to train UAE astronauts for potential missions to the ISS. On September 21st, the UAE confirmed that it has signed an agreement with NASA to train UAE astronauts for potential missions to the ISS, including spacewalks and long-duration missions. NASA released the news earlier last week on September 17th. As part of the Reimbursable Space Act Agreement with MBRSC, NASA will provide training to four Emirati astronauts. Two of the UAE's astronauts, Haza al-Mansuri, the first person from the UAE to travel to space, and Sultan al-Nayadi, are expected to begin training this fall at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The remaining astronauts will be selected from the second batch of the UAE's astronaut program, 
and will commence training in 2021, joining NASA's 2021 astronaut candidate class. Just to be clear, the UAE astronauts will experience the same level of training as that graduate class. According to an article from Gulf News, under the program, the astronauts will be trained to manage various missions on the ISS, including simulated spacewalks and long-duration stays, along with training in major systems, robotics, EVAs, T-38 jet courses, water and land survival, Russian language skills, and theoretical training. According to a statement released by NASA, while the training will prepare the UAE astronauts for future long-duration missions, such missions are outside the scope of the agreement. I've talked about the UAE's rapid achievement in terms of space in a previous video. It was only two years ago that the UAE launched the first entirely Emirati-built satellite, KhalifaSat, and only a year ago that the UAE sent its first astronaut to the ISS. And earlier this year, the Emirates successfully launched the Emirati Mars mission's Hope Probe, designed to study Mars's upper and lower atmosphere, Mars's climate and weather, and the dynamic interplay between these two. Hope is expected to provide insights about why Mars is losing hydrogen and oxygen to space. The UAE's bold efforts in space are designed to inspire the younger generation to get involved in STEM and transition the Emirates to a knowledge-based economy.